I think you're on. Am I um, on? I don't see a broadcasting thing, but. No, it's when it's off that it was. Oh. It's when the orange thing went Am I off. on? I guess I'm on. Wow. A so voice just, from beyond. So we're just like really awkward people in the 50s with a film camera. And they well, say, hey, everyone, pose for the, for the movie. There should be someone and they pointing. Go, there should be someone pointing. That's when you know to and go. Then it's a film camera. You can move. And they go, oh. Welcome, everybody. So it's awkward as hell. Um, let me just make sure I'll take a look at the. Uh, yeah. Excellent. See in the chat okay. and trying to get everything all right, there. right, right. Okay, everybody. Hi, everyone. My name is Craig Shemin. My I'm name the, is Stephanie DeBruzzo. I'm the president of the Jim Henson Legacy. I was going to introduce you and give you a big buildup, but I'm sitting right here. This is Stephanie. They're going to say, "Who's that lump sitting next to Craig?" She's my lovely wife and a wonderful performer and yeah, writer and yeah, everything. Yeah. So, welcome to our uh, program tonight. And in just a few minutes, we are going to be welcoming a special guest. You could continue with your own introduction for yourself. You started to say who you were. No, I don't need You're to president, of the, president Jim of the Jim Legacy. Henson Legacy. You do many things. Yes. I mean, you know the one thing you don't do? What? Get your hair cut. <laughs> yes. I like it. I know. I like it too. I just didn't want you know this to be the very fluffy elephant in the room. I want to just make sure that uh, everybody is... Oh, somebody says you two look nice, so I guess they can see Thanks. This. Um, we are going to be doing a lot of fun stuff tonight. We're going to be trying to answer some of your questions, which you can submit through the Q and A. I already see a few, uh, questions in there. So, uh, we are, have some, a few trivia questions for you, but since everybody reacted a certain way, we're going to start the show with 30 minutes of anagrams <laughs> because everybody liked it so much last time. But there, there are going to be newcomers maybe who don't know that last time you did a very unpopular anagram. Some people didn't like the anagrams, but which I don't understand. Anagrams are fun, but maybe it's the, maybe was it the fact that you didn't, um, there was less of a visual component. I mean, well, I held up a yeah. the anagram. So you think anagrams need to make a comeback in 2020? I don't know. What about rebuses? Rebuses, definitely. We can watch concentration reruns and see lots of rebuses. Does anyone out there know what a rebus is? Oh, see. I'll oh, go oh for yes, yes. Someone submitted an anagram, him Jensen. I ah, just, it's that's good. That's a good one. That's good. Thank you. Uh, that rebuses was, are picture word puzzles. That was see? Jonathan Sloman. Right. Yeah. And someone wins a, uh, knowing what a rebus is, Adele Khan. Great. Thank you. Uh, so no anagrams today. Someone said like Uncle Rebus. <laughs> yes. That's very funny. Yes. Disney lost Disney an opportunity. Disney Vault. Um, we are going to uh, uh, meet our guest in just a moment. But first, I want to acknowledge that this is a very special day in Henson history. It is. It is. Tell them why, honey. This is the 65th anniversary of the premiere of Sam and Friends, Jim Henson's first TV show that he had by himself on, uh, with Jane Henson back in the good old days and really? WRC TV. Real WRC TV. And where was WRC TV located? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Now, where is Washington, D.C. exactly? Um, it's down in, in the, uh, right next to Virginia and Maryland. Virginia, Virginia. And that Virginia is a, a state of some kind yes. in a country called exactly. what exactly? I'm not sure what the shtick is that you're doing here. I'm playing but. the stupid. <laughs> I'm playing the stupid person who doesn't know. Well, that we should taking uh, the stupid pill. Okay. Shut. Craig used to say that. So Leonard Nimoy used to host a show called Stand By Lights Camera Action. Yes, and he would ask filmmakers questions that he clearly knew the answers to. Having worked in film having, for right. 20, 30 years. So, so Craig liked to say he had to take a stupid pill, meaning he'd say, now this camera you're referring to. That is what? It's a piece of equipment. Oh, it's a camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what I was, you didn't get oh, okay. that that was the shtick I was doing? Well, yeah. Because yeah. here's why. You were, you were telling this information to me. You, you were looking... <laughs> You were looking at me, and they're the ones who you should be telling that well, information we, let, to. Well, we're talking about Sam and Friends and WRC in Washington. Let's give a shout out to your sister. Hey, Diana in Arlington. Uh, so, yeah, I had the pleasure of visiting WRC just mm -hmm. a few months ago, researching the book. And certainly did. They still have the studios, just the same studio that uh, Jim worked out of, and they but have they a little plaque. 
I was going to say, is there a commemorative plaque? Yeah, not only that, but outside the building, there's like a little walking tour, mm. and they have a panel of the walking tour, and there are pictures of Jim and Jane. On oh, nice. It. Very nice. Glad to know they're represented. So um, that we paid tribute to the premiere of Sam and Friends. And now... Oh, wait, you know what to really pay tribute to Sam and Friends? <laughs> we should lip sync to some. <laughs> we can lip sync. <laughs> then we'd have to pay music licensing. That's right. Yeah, no, we don't want the ghost of Stan Freeberg to... No. No. Um, now, as you can see, there's a little picture of Jackson Beretta where Bill Beretta is going to be in just a moment. So I think what we'll do is uh, invite Bill we to join us. We shouldn't have told him then that it was Jackson Beretta. Oh. We should have said, like, it was, it, was, it was actually Bill who's been going through some stuff <laughs> in quarantine. Um, let's see. I, I can uh, bring Bill in or Bill can bring himself in. There's Bill. Is it, is it on? Is this on? You're coming in loud. Is it on? This, this yeah. thing is on. Are you guys on? Yeah, you guys we're on. on. You're, we're on. You're on. You're on. You're on. Hi, Hi Bill. Welcome, Bill Beretta. Am I supposed oh. to look up there to you? I'm going to look at you. I have there. no idea. I'm you trying. Can, I'm looking look at you. Look anywhere you face. want. Um, Bill, okay. I want to just uh, welcome you here. I want to say, give everybody a quick Bill story, Please just do. to talk about how wonderful Bill is. Um, Please do. Back, years ago, we did a Carnegie Hall concert. Yeah. Was that 2012? Oh, I remember. Eight yeah. years ago. And um, originally, you know, we had planned, we had, um, you know, we had budgeted and planned for certain performers and, uh, you know. I wasn't invited. We could afford, well, we didn't, you know, we you couldn't know, fly it wasn't people up to in. me. Right. We couldn't fly people in. And then later uh, in the process, we found that because we had all of these people coming in, Disney had decided to do some stuff here. And oh, also, yeah. what we didn't know then is that Frank Oz decided to do his top secret right. Muppet Guys Talking shoot around that time, too. Best kept secret so in the So we bills. heard that Bill was coming in. So I called Bill up, and I said, Bill, you know, now you're coming in. Do you want to be in the show? And I said, we don't have any money left to right. pay you. And Bill said, I want to be I in the no. show. Yeah. Oh, I did. I said no, yes. you did. Oh, said, I just want to be there. Well, I think it was an educational <laughs> thing. I don't think anyone, did we get paid? I think we just got no, tossed, every, right? No, I, no there, there was pay. There was, I don't but remember it, there was not, paid. it was not like pay, pay. It was, you know. Like a stipend. It was a stipend. But the, oh, they were, well, that's right. We were out of stipend. Yeah, we were out of, of we got stipend. water. We were out of jello cups. Yeah. There was water. I think we did find a little little money for Bill, but uh, cab and crackers, cab fare, yeah, crackers. and crackers. That's right. But it was so sweet and generous, and That's we were Bill. able to open the show with Rolf the dog, and he had been playing. He had played Carnegie Hall with Jimmy Dean more than forty years before. That's right. right. And so we, we started clip, the clip. We right. showed a clip of of that, and then brought yeah. you on to give the conductor his baton. It was such a beautiful moment. So I Pretty thank hall. you for being so thank generous you. with your talent. Please. I was obviously my honor and pleasure to be there to, on that day. It was amazing. We had, oh, it was amazing. I'll never forget it. It was beautiful. I have a, I have a Bill story. Don't, tell us uh -oh. your Bill story. No, no. It just the first time I ever worked with Bill for, was the first time I ever met Bill. It was did you pay you me? Came in, I did not pay you. No, <laughs> I, I, let's just say that I was not in a position to pay anybody anything oh, for right. any reason at any time. No, okay. it was the first season of The Wubbulous World of Dr. Seuss, and you oh. came in to guest star. So this is like 1996. Mm. I had been at Muppets about a little less than three years. Um, you came in, and I you you were already doing Muppets Tonight, and I knew you um. had done Dinosaurs. I knew you were doing such great stuff on Muppets Tonight, and I was really nervous about meeting you. And I was mm. really nervous to work with you because I'm like, this is Bill Beretta. This is Bill Beretta, and you, you were and are still, I think, one of the most giving performers I've ever worked with in my entire life. My I did God, not you guys know are going to make me expect. like. No, but it's true. I, I, I'm like, oh, you know, he's California guy. He's one of the core team, and like, he's going to come into the show and just be like, hey, I'm Bill Beretta, you. Yeah! And, and uh, no, like, he was just the most. You were so kind and sweet and giving, and you didn't know me from Adam. You didn't have to be nice to me, and you were. But I knew so you were Italian. Nice to me. I knew you. Well, were that Italian. helped. Joey Mazzarino didn't know. know I was Italian for four <laughs> years. <laughs> One day he's like, "Wait a minute, you're Italian?" I'm like, "My last name's DeBruzzo." <laughs> How much more Italian could you be? 
Hey, what are you going to say? <laughs> and then we got to work with Bill again on Donna's Day. Oh, Donna's Florida. Day. That was That's, fun. That yeah, was fun. that was amazing that fun. That was great going to Florida. And that was, yeah. that was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. You were, you were so on. fun with her. Yeah. And with it was the, uh, doing the Swedish show. Yeah, and, and Donna Erickson, if you're out there. Hello. Mm -hmm. She's still out Hello, there in Donna. Minnesota. Hello. And that Too was fun sweet. because um, the Swedish chef, you know, Donna was trying to do this serious thing. And what well, I remember like a Martha is, Stewart for yeah, families yeah. kind of show. But uh, the yeah. Swedish chef just, you know, oh, great. was the Swedish chef. It was a great comic for And I remember that, that we did a recipe for Pun pan pan pancakes. <laughs> right. And you would call it the kiki. Yeah, the kiki. And, and she know it's Han Cocker, Cocker chef. Yeah, the kiki. In, in Swedish, it's Han <laughs> Cocker. <laughs> we we still we still refer to that now. We still refer to that. Oh, really? Sometimes we'll yeah, if we're making pancakes like <laughs> so, oh my gosh. so everybody out there, what we're gonna do, we're gonna toss out a few trivia questions. Hello everybody out gonna, there, by the way. Yeah, yeah hi. Hi, we just thanks for coming and ourselves. doing the being a part uh, of this. And then this we're gonna so take sweet. some of these questions. Let's we'll start out with some questions for Bill, and then we're gonna have a little show and tell later. So I let's start the first one in the feed, got, Bill. By the way, I got a new robe, so I just want to show everyone oh, that. Oh, I think excellent. that's going to be really exciting. Excellent. And, and, and some um, a, a shaver that I'm going to be shaving later as well. So. Nice. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, this is appointment. This is appointment streaming. Uh, Sean Horace asks, Bill, what's your favorite Muppet to perform? Ah, uh, well, I'll tell you. It's Sean, is it? Sean. Is it Sean. Sean. Yeah, Sean. So, um, you know, Sean. I have been asked this question and I have a really boring answer, but I swear to you, it's the truth. Uh, I enjoy different characters at different times for different reasons. So it just depends on what I'm doing and what the character is doing, but I enjoy them because a lot of the times they remind me of some of the people that I've kind of based them on or, or you know, different reasons. Uh, why I enjoy these personalities. So I, I, I can't say there's one in particular. So my boring answer is I like all of them depending on what we're doing and, and what they're doing in the moment. Sorry. Here's that's the a, thing that's not a boring, boring answer reason. though. I think that I would say the exact same thing. I think it most was, of the other Muppet performers would say the exact same thing. Because, I was talking to Matt. He, he felt yeah. that Matt feels the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Some days you really want to play that. And then there are one off characters that I loved playing. Oh, sure. You Absolutely. know? And yeah. they're fun for different reasons. So like I, 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 it's not boring at all. That's universal, yeah. I think. Yeah. And, and I think, um, I, yeah. I, yeah. Well, there you go. That's it. Thanks, yeah. Sean. I, I, that's sorry, but I hope that's okay. Well, I think that's better a, be okay. That's a good answer. It's real. Um, here's a very timely question from Nick ah, Kramer. Yes. Bill. What was it like working with Little Richard on Muppets Tonight? We just lost uh, Little Richard. Wow. Well, I'd say I was just posting a couple things because um, he uh, he was an amazing force. You know, he came in. It was like a wind just came in and spun and made people happy, like excited. He was just this this ball of excitement and energy and fun to play with, you know, he, um, I ended up doing, there was a, a thing that we did where he was playing the piano and I got, I was in this costume. I, I was dog lion for this little thing that we did and I had to chase him, uh, but he chased me in rehearsals. Like he would chase, he wanted, he wanted it to, to, to be the other way. And he was like, Ooh! you know, he's chasing after dog lion and I was running away. Uh, but I we, love that. We, we had a lot of fun and he, I mean, there's, there's nobody like him, right? I mean, this is a guy that basically created the sound and heartbeat of our country in rock and roll. I mean, without him, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be, I don't think rock and roll, right? I mean, a lot of, a lot of people are saying we wouldn't have the Beatles. We wouldn't have Bowie. We wouldn't have Prince. We wouldn't have James Brown. We wouldn't have right. like so many of the of Rolling Stones. A lot of people are, I think it was okay. Bowie's son tweeted today. That oh, really? he, he believes that, yeah, his dad would not. Yeah, I was just watching a David Letterman interview and, and mm. he was, and Little Richard was saying how, you know, Billy Preston was his piano player and, and yeah. Jimi Hendrix Jimmy was Hendrix, his guitar player. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, he, oh, really, and he like let his, the Beatles open for him on tour in, yeah, and, in 1960. And James Brown was his backup singer. I mean, you know, he, he really was 
I think rock and roll. I mean, he well, and that. he, uh, you know, he apparently met Sister Rosetta Thorpe when he was 14 mm. and was influenced by her and brought all uh, that. So like, it's like both, it, it's just an amazing, it's an amazing story. And too yeah. much of it I didn't know until today, which mm. shame on me. Because mm. uh, I didn't know that Jimi Hendrix was in his band. I didn't know. I, I didn't know that either. That until today. Yeah. Great. Yeah. But anyway, oh, I'm so glad you had fun with it. I can't even imagine. Oh you're, so you were in Dog Lion and you're being chased <laughs> by Little Richard. Well, I, so the rehearsal, I didn't have the head on, right? So I just had the body. <laughs> uh, I hope there's footage of that or pictures somewhere. Oh. I don't think so. <laughs> but so amazing. it was just like he was just he was like talking to me. He was like, Bill, whoo! And he came running around chasing after me, you know. It's like, no, I think it's going the other way around. He was like, Woo! <laughs> he was um, and then let's he gave us all sorry, he gave us all a little Bible uh, um, <gasps> that he signed. Uh, oh, which yeah. I, I, I have in storage. I don't I was looking oh, for my it. Goodness. Uh, but yeah, he gave out all of us this it was like a little booklet, a little small, not the whole Bible, but it was like a a little um, a spiritual booklet that he uh -huh. had with him and he gave everybody one of those. It was really sweet. I was just watching play. someone posted, it was the opening for Purple Rain and Little Richard was there and he was asking, what do you think? It was like, well, you know, Prince is me in this generation. And he showed that he brought Prince a Bible that he signed. So that okay. was, I guess, a oh, thing. Right. He must have had a yeah, I think he gave it out. Well, no, because he became part. a reverend yeah. and he, you know. Oh, absolutely, but, that, yeah. but that's so special that you have that bill. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, incredible. Well, let's uh, do uh, one more question right now. We'll get back, come back to them. And here's one I think I know my answer to is yes. uh, Christian Lucero asks, whatever happened to the Seymour elephant puppet? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what happened to him exactly. Uh, I, other than at this point, he's probably decayed in some way, but- You missed the um, perfect answer. Yeah, oh, well, I had an answer too. And if I know, Oh, ah. sorry. Sorry. See, no, I, I would. Eh, I know. I know. I know. Uh, no, I would have said Pepe had him taken care of. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, he loves Pepe. Pepe got it. Yeah. No, he I know, but Simo. you know, he's just Pepe, you know, Pepe's, Pepe's big enough for two. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know. I guess somehow, I don't know. Just gradually, Pepe somehow. I don't know. Turned I don't know why. We, I don't know why Seymour kind of got phased out. Whether Brian was too busy to perform him at times, or it just didn't feel. Like, I don't know. I felt. I always. Well, I think that him. it looked like you guys were really into doing more with uh, with Johnny and Sal. Mm. Well, Maybe that I love too. I mean, that I, was a know, great. Yeah. I love doing that. That's my you know one of my favorite things to do. But I always loved to Seymour and Pepe. I thought were so funny just because their scale is so ridiculous. Right. Yeah. You know, and Pepe and Seymour's so sweet and Pepe's such an ass, you know. It's right. like uh can I say oh, sorry, probably shouldn't curse. Um yeah, I said her. but but we were just, talking about a donkey. That's true. That's right. He was he, Pepe's a real donkey. And uh yeah. <laughs> but I so I just like that contrast, you know, and I I miss them being together. I don't know. I, just, I did I don't remember because it was a long time ago. I, I seem to remember Seymour and Pepe were much more of a vaudeville duo that mm. only existed to do the jokes. Did they do other things narratively, like more narrative comedy? Like yeah, like well, like Johnny and Sal? Uh not as much as Johnny and Sal, but they did um they did some other things on Muppets Tonight. They were elevator operators event. Like they okay. had just weird jobs. Right. They worked in the kitchen. You know? I just couldn't, I just really, I honestly, it's, it's getting to be that point in my memory where it's like, oh, I no, honestly I, can't remember. I, well, I obviously can't remember Ella Fine now, so don't worry about it. But, but uh, that, that's <laughs> the thing that looms large in my head is, is that, <laughs> that, that, that exchange. But, but, I, but they had odd jobs basically on right. the show. They were looking for, and then someone would allow them to do a bad routine. Yeah. Right. Uh, someone anonymous attendee, here's a question for you, oh. Stephanie. Stephanie, can you talk about how you prepared to take on the role of Prairie Dawn? What questions mm. did you ask Fran Brill? I think I asked Fran Brill, are you sure? <laughs> are you really sure? Are you positive? No, I, I will say this. When I, was in, when I was in college, I don't remember if I've mentioned this before. I, it's just, you know, just being a nerdy Muppet fan, my answering machine in college, I, I got a little 
half, you know, those little old Casio pianos with the half keys, the, mm. the, the ones, the battery operated ones. And I sort of plunked out a little, little keyboard thing. And I, my answering machine was, oh, you have reached Stephanie's answering machine. Wow. I hope that the message you leave will be clean. And yeah, um, so you could say I've been preparing for it, but at the same time, I'll never forget the first time Fran ever heard my Prairie Dawn. It was my second season on the show. We were doing a sketch. The the fan nerds will know it's fairy tale fairy tales today, and and it's called Striking Food. And the food went on strike, and I played the infamous Bean Number Three, um, which I love still referring that I played Bean Number Three because you know, mm -hmm. and uh, and Fran had laryngitis. And so she was on another part of the set. We, we were on separate parts of the set because she was you know, doing her little roving reporter and then cutting to the vegetables. And someone, she just kept in the middle of it, like, <sighs> so someone, and I don't remember who it was, whether it was like Rudman or Joey or Peter Linz, just started saying, oh, welcome, oh, welcome. Oh, and then everybody started going, oh, welcome, oh, welcome. Oh, and then I went, oh, right. welcome, oh, welcome. And Peter, oh, I think it was it. Peter, looked at me and went, hey. <laughs> and I don't remember the look that Fran gave me because I did not know her very well at the time. I think that was the only time I ever like did Prairie. And, but then eventually, um, if Fran was doing Zoe for a, cr a crowd scene, I would usually hold up Prairie. So, oh, yeah. so I feel like I had Fran's blessing in that regard. It happens that way, I think. And for some reason, I think when the how people have kind of taken on characters there's this mm -hmm. kind of like a little I don't know I mean maybe not with me and Jim because I didn't work with Jim but it feels right. like people that have been around each other or that were around the performers whatever that is I don't know how that happens but it's a very kind of organic way mm -hmm. that people feel comfortable and they're able to find that somehow mm -hmm. I, I don't know it's it's weird. It, yeah, it is just it, really uh, interesting to me. David Rudman was very close to Richard. Yeah. And then right. ended Rudman? up taking over Scooter. Look, and I think a lot of that. Well, and Matt in, was very close to Jerry Matt. and Carol. Yeah, Jerry yeah. and Carol. Right. It mm -hmm. just, I don't know. It's a beautiful kind of thing that happens in, a, in an unusual it's, way, you know? Yeah. It, it, it is nice, I will say, because I know that before Jerry died, he had sort of made a conscious choice to talk to Matt about his characters. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, Fran made the choice to retire. And even though it was not her sole, uh, you know, choice, she was in on the audition. She was there. So she mm. had say, and it was with her blessing. And I think it's nice when you have that, but like you said, yeah, it's nice when you know the person and that's not always possible, but yeah. I think that even, but even with you not having met Jim, you knew enough about the world and you knew enough about him that I think that there was this automatic respect. I think that's the key, is the respect for the performer who originated the character. And that feeling of, it's not about doing an imitation. It's not about, I mean, we still like, oh, how can I make this more blah, blah. But mm. making it your own while still respecting the integrity of the performance and what the original performer brought to it. it it's, it's like this eighth sense that I can't mm, I, explain, but I feel like those of us who've done it know what it yeah, is. I think there's it's something about- It's not really about, an imitation. I think it's like a, um, I think with, at least in my situation, I think it's because there was a, a kind of trust that was gained among the, the performers that you're around yeah. them enough they realize where your heart lies and where yeah. you know wh where y your sense of integrity is and mm -hmm. you know are you trusted in a sense to kind of do that and I think yeah. that's a big part of it and then when it comes to doing somebody else's character it's obviously not yours in any way shape or form and you're doing some kind of impersonation of it at first until right. you start to find the essence of who it is not so much yeah. how it sounds Right. but who it is and then the cake on top is if you can get close enough to the voice that it feeds the essence mm -hmm. of the character right that that's at least my approach because i feel like i'm just doing a bad impression but no. over time i feel like i figured out how to make it feel like the character what jim's jim's energy is different yeah. in rolf than it is with the chef and yes you know it's that kind of stuff. You know, well, it's the it's the it's the, it's the cadence, it's the little things, and then no, it, like for me knowing Fran, 
and knowing the things that Fran brought of herself to the character, I think helps too. But you, you touched on something. It's the trust with the other performers that really becomes key because it is, it's a, it's a two, three, eight way street where, yeah, you can't really start working well with inheriting a character unless you've worked with all the other people doing all the other characters who know yeah, that your intentions a... are good and you're not just going to futz with it for, to make it your own, there's... to just put your stamp on it. Yeah, and there's, a, there's already had, that had been a pre-established relationship between yeah. the characters and the people, right? So you're yeah. building a relationship beneath the puppets that's going to feed that. And if that's working down there, yep. then I think it makes it easier for the others to feel comfortable about doing that. Yeah, I feel like that's something that sometimes gets missed by people who hear about someone taking over a character and think it just needs to sound as much like the character as possible for it to well, be it's always. A Always the voice, yeah. Yeah, but you know, if you're an outside person, if you're an outsider and you're looking at the Muppets and you're like, oh, Kermit doesn't sound like blah, blah, Ernie doesn't sound like blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, um, it's so much more than that it, it, because it's not just a voice. And I think that those of us right. who've been doing that a long time, it's so much more than a voice. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and fair enough that people there, you know, there are so many people that have certain expectations about these characters, right? So yes, and I what, understand that. what I, what I recognize as Kermit's voice is Jim, right? right? But then as I became a part of the Muppets, Steve became the voice that I heard as Kermit, kind yep. of almost overpowering what I remember as Jim. But then there's a generation that knows Steve's Kermit. That's right. And that's what they know. They To hear now Matt do something closer to Jim almost in that's a way. That's right, yes, right? very much then so. Then people are going, well, that doesn't sound like, because they're yep. used to how beautiful Steve used to do it, right? Yeah. So it's always changing and growing. Oh, yeah. And I think that's a, I think that's a good thing, because no, we don't last forever, obviously. Right. But um, I, I think you I, will. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. You're evergreen. Let's, let's They'll dance on every No, um, but I just yeah, want to yeah. say one more thing. I think that oh. there's that, but there's always that question of, uh, it's, and this happens a lot more at Sesame, it's, oh wait, do I do Prairie 20 years ago or I do now? Like, or do, <laughs> right. I, do I do 70s Prairie, which sounded different, or do I do now? It's like saying, well, do I do 1989 I... Homer Simpson or now Homer Simpson? And that's why I think it's really more about the character and who, yep. who, who the character is rather than what they sound like because the character has changed since the 70s and grown yep. as, as she grew with Fran. And now she's yep. growing with you, right? Yep. So it's just, I think that's the key to it is having a grasp on the character and then just letting the voice that makes people feel comfortable enough to know that right. that's who that is, but it's going to be yeah. a little different, unfortunately. So Thank I you for indulging apologize. me. I no, love, I wonderful. just, I don't get to have this conversation Speak with Bill. Yourselves. I don't get to have this kind of <laughs> no, conversation <laughs> with Bill. Shrimp Sorry, I'll, no, I'll it's quite back. all right. No, no. I'll sit back like um, the little wife. I'll gonna, make some no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to, um, I'm going to throw a, a trivia question out to the, the group out in, in uh, uh, television land or good. web webinar yeah. land. And, uh, and then we'll go into a little show and tell. Now, here's a qu the first question. Only one person sang the theme song for more than one James Bond movie. She sang one of them on The Muppet Show. Name her, the song she sang on The Muppet Show, and the other two James Bond themes she recorded. Wow, these are tough. Uh, I'm, to, tough I'm, not, I'm not supposed to guess it, am I? This is for the people out there, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, it, well, you can, if you if you know the answer, you can uh, toss it. Let's see if anybody, some, oh, okay, someone has a Goldfinger, Shirley Bassey, and I don't know the others. So I think that person is right because he didn't know the others. Diamonds are forever. Uh, that is correct. And you only live twice? No, no. no. But you only live twice, I believe, uh, does have uh, Jimmy Dean in it. It does? That's, so, yeah. Yeah. Moonraker really? is Jimmy correct. Dane is Jimmy and, Dean is uh, very good in it. Oh yeah, my Diamonds gosh. Are Forever and Moonraker are the other two. Shirley Bassey. It was Shirley Bassey, right? Yeah. So, very Bill, good. why don't you start us one. off in the show and tell? You have some some cool stuff. Uh, okay. Well, and you know, I um, I've shared a couple things, but obviously, a lot of people haven't seen them yet because I was doing something with my brother Gene and I were starting up this thing, and we were just messing around and trying it out, and so I showed a couple things, but. I want to kind of go back to my first uh, kind of big experience that was with Henson and Disney together. Sesame Place? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, dinosaurs. Ah. And so this is a maquette uh, designed by Kirk Thatcher. 
He designed all the dinosaur characters. And this was a maquette that was created by the Jim Henson Workshop. Um, and you can see Earl was a little bit harder looking than he ultimately became, although he could kind of get that expression, but um, he was softened a little bit, you know, he became a little more cuddly, but still uh, blow, uh, well, can you say that? I won't say that word, but he could, because because nobody took him seriously, he could be angry, right? He could, just yeah. like Jackie Gleason and the Honeymooners, that's who Earl was to me. Yeah. Um, and we should anyway, mention this, your partner in, in doing Earl, uh, Stuart Pankin. Well, yes, there's, there was really three and, of us and, in yeah. total. So um, uh, four of us, so, but so, uh, yeah. So anyway, let me just, so this was a gift uh, of Earl that, that uh, there were two of them, Brian has one and, and I have one. Um, That's beautiful. But, uh, but like yes, it was, tight. yeah, but it yeah. was, I was inside Oh, my camera looks like it went fuzzy or something. Uh, I was. No, we got you good. We got you. Is it clear? You. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, uh, I was inside the first season. I was inside, and Dave Goals. That's who I, you know, I first met the Muppet guys. Was Dave and Steve worked on it as well, and Kevin. Um, and so I was inside. Dave was doing the uh, animatronic facial manipulations and the jaw, and Stuart Pankin was the voice of Earl, always the voice of Earl. And then after the first season, David had enough of me screaming inside and <laughs> <laughs> Pat, you know, fainting because the suit would cut off my artery and I would pass out. And <laughs> it, was, it was a very stressful time. Uh, yeah. at, at times, it was very stressful. But um, I think he had, he had had enough. And, and it had just been, you know, Jim had just passed away that, the, the, in, in 90. And so it was, a, it was kind of, a, uh, you know, Odd time, I think, for everybody moving on and doing projects without Jim around. And anyway, so Dave was amazing. We had so much fun the first year. He had enough. He left, and then Mac Wilson came on and, and endured the rest with me. And uh, uh, so, and Mac was phenomenal. He he mm. just did some amazing stuff as well, you know. Uh, but yeah, those were the three of us. Yeah. What do you guys got? Well, I'm, I'll still take uh, around, and I'm going to show. This is a letter that I actually wrote on behalf of Jim Henson. And it, it all came, I was working in the public relations yeah, department at up. the time. Oh yeah. And a museum, oh, the, uh, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts had this painting in their collection. <laughs> and they wanted to have Rolf come and attend a big gala and, oh and talk about the painting and everything. So right. usually when did we were- Did you write this? I did write that. I love it. So uh, when we had situations like that, we would be prepared to decline on behalf of Jim because his schedule was very limited. So we would sure. always prepare uh, you know, the letter to send back. So in this case, I wrote the letter. Oh, it's very funny. And we did it. It's here. As, yeah. Can we hear it? And yeah, uh, it was the, the woman in charge was Colette Waters. So I wrote, dear Colette, may I call you Collie? On, Hit dog, <laughs> Collie, dog. On behalf of my good friend, Jim Henson. You should be reading this though. <laughs> on behalf of my good friend, Jim Henson. Wait, I turn it towards afraid. me, let me see. Yeah. Turn it, let me see. Hey, let's see if we can. I don't think I can do it. Wait, let me see. Uh, on behalf of my good friend, Jim Henson, I am afraid we must send our regrets as we will unfortunately be unable to attend the grand opening of your children's art resource center. I truly wish we could be there, but Jim has some previous production commitments and I wouldn't be comfortable without his, oh, sorry, without him there. Uh, it also happens to be, uh, it also happens to be smack in the middle of the flea and tick season. But um -pum. the dog in portrait of an extraordinary musical dog may in fact be related to me. He bears a striking resemblance to my great, 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 great uncle Percival. Personally, I never quite knew what was so great about him. Uncle Percy always had trouble with the minute waltz. He couldn't play, <laughs> he couldn't play it under an hour. But Percy was a great piano player, and some folks in my family say that I inherited his musical gift. My cousin Henry got his money. <laughs> if you would like another musical dog in my place, might I suggest a few friends of mine? Johann Sebastian Bach, Wolfgang Mozart, and of course, Puccini. Both Jim and I extend our best wishes and hope that your grand opening <laughs> will be a success. Sincerely, Rolf and Jim Henson. Thank you. Very that was nice. great. Very funny, Craig. That's a so we would uh, so I uh, we would print out two copies of the letter in case Jim, you know, made a mistake signing one of them. 
and we yeah. send it up. And within, there was a note, and I still have the note that his assistant and Kinney wrote, and it said, oh. if you would like, if you like this letter and do not want to attend this event, would you sign for Rolf? If you would like to attend, just let me know. Thanks. So Jim signed both copies. So I kept one of them. We sent the other back. Cool. And oh, he wrote back, nice letter, Jim. Awesome. So that was one, when I, one of the first things when I, when I was uh, working. I was still in the PR That's department amazing. at the time. October 25th, 1989. 1989, yeah. I was what a, a freshman in college. What, very uh, fun. Good. Thank you. What's your, well, you got something. I don't have much. Oh, show, uh, show your, uh, well, yeah, your this, souvenirs yeah, from but your this, youth. But this is silly. So I just want to show everybody's got the, a lot of people have the old Fisher Price Sesame set. And I didn't, we used to keep, um, place different toys at the two different grandmothers. The one grandmother, I had a Weeble Mickey Mouse Club set, which was so great. It was, it was Weebles. They Are you Italian they on both sides? Down. Your mother and father? Uh, Italian? Well, uh, full Italian on my dad's side, on my mom's side, part Italian, mostly Italian, and a little German Austrian. I'm just trying to picture the, the Italian grandmother's house that you're going to. Oh, the to. Italian Who, grandmother's house. Nice. Now, there at the Italian grandmother's house, we had McDonald's had this play set with like these little square people. It was amazing. So that was a place that we had there. The Sesame place that was at my maternal grandmother's with the Weebles. Well, clearly, so that I was able to rescue. A couple of the pieces, not the whole set, but a couple of the pieces. So my Cookie Monster has seen better days. His eyes has, have been loved. He has no pupils. And, but what I love about it is it's just so representative of like the first season of Cookie Monster because he was literally just a sack. And Bert and Ernie have seen, have seen better days as well. Look at Ernie. I, I know, right? Like Do they have Ernie. noses or they're painted on? No, they're they're painted on, but they're just painted rubbed on. off. <laughs> rubbed. That means they're well yeah. loved. They were they were they loved. Were well so with. yeah, and I've got my my street sign, and and there were other cool. things that came with it, but I, I don't have much more than that. The Oscar was the coolest oh. thing because he comes in and out of the can. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but what those year are personal to me. Show? Well, yeah. So then this is when I was in college. So around I was in college between eighty nine and ninety three, and it was sort of an interesting time for Sesame Street and Muppet merchandise because the Disney deal had fallen through and there were some things, but there wasn't everything. So there were these little stampers. This is the Burt stamper and you can see the stamp there. And I think it's a Joe Matthew illustration. Now, <laughs> I was so poor in college that I didn't have a stamp pad because that cost, you know, like a dollar. Yeah. So you could just color, Sharpie, you could just yeah. color your, yeah, with your magic marker. You could just right. put the ink right on there and then and then stamp your, I, I didn't, oh, it didn't come out that's that way, but I didn't have fancy checks. So I good. used to, I used to stamp Bert onto my plain free checks that came with the Aww. checking account. This is how <laughs> sad and pathetic I was. That's wonderful. But you make do. Awesome. And yeah. there's an Ernie one too, but the Bert I always liked very much. I'm going to throw out another trivia question before we do our next round of show and tell. Mm. Um, I don't have much for show and tell. That's okay. Well, you can show we the take questions. Oh, that's true. Could yeah, we're going to take some more questions. That's true. Here's, a, here's a good one. You might not know this, Bill. I Muppet probably don't. performer and director Frank Oz. You know Ooh. him. <laughs> uh, Osnowitz is the name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Muppet performer and director Frank Francis. Oz has made many cameo appearances in feature films yes but yes. one of them none of them are very good but he's been right. quite a few <laughs> but only one of them was only seen in the extended broadcast television version of the film name the film and what role did frank play well okay. people are justin oh, yeah. and eric already have it you, you got it already know? yeah no idea I, I don't follow three. his career superman, <laughs> superman three, three. What, he, what yeah. was he? What did he do? He was a brain surgeon. <laughs> and he's getting ready. He's in the operating because of course, room. right? He's it's like, oh, now we're going to start the, going into the brain there. And something that uh, Richard Pryor's character does, I believe, causes a, a worldwide blackout. So oh, my gosh. It uh, plunges the operating room into darkness, and you just hear Frank, was that me? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was great in uh, In-N-Out. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, and knives out. Knives out. 
no, no, Knives no, in I'm and talking, out. No, wait, what's the animation? What's the the Picture? Oh, 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 Inside Out. Inside Out. Inside Out. I'm sorry, I blew it. I messed up my own joke. No, that's okay. It's also in Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Monsters Inside and Out with Knives. Right. Right, but, no, we, we, out with knives. We just yeah. got the the Blu-ray of uh, of Knives Out. It's beautiful. If oh, you, and, he's, and he's there's he's a lot of good it. goodies on it. Yeah, that's um, like the longest party he's ever that's had. That's what we were saying. Is this is the longest uh, non Muppet role Frank has had, and he's so great in it. What yeah, a great great good. movie, Frank. If you're watching, and we know you're not. <laughs> <He's> not. <laughs> yeah. You should have been a lawyer. Safe to say. <laughs> yeah. Safe Let's take say. some more questions from the from the gang, and then we'll do a little more show and tell before we wrap up. That's right, Fred. Uh, yes. So people are saying Frank directed In and Out, uh, which was the movie with see. Kevin Klein, and yeah. he. Yeah, I actually, so, I got to go to that out, premiere. That was a great fun premiere. Really? To go to in a, yeah, that was that a great was movie. Paul Rudnick. That's a great. Yeah. Let's. Uh, I think this is something both of you can talk about. So John Donald is asking uh, if there are any rem remembrances of Jerry Nelson. Hmm. Oh my God. Are there any? Mary was the best. <laughs> I tell you the first time I met him. Oh yeah? Yeah. Do tell. Uh, it was uh, Brian Henson's wedding in Tortola on the island of Tortola. Wow. And he was sitting at it like a, you know, thatched roofed tiki bar thing. And mm. uh, I just went up and got a drink and he was just there and he said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm good, how are you? And that was it. That's the first time we met. <laughs> Did he know that you were a performer? Did he know? No, that... no I wasn't. Oh, you weren't? I mean, I, you no, weren't not yet. yet. No, no, no. I was just. But did know, he know was... you were? You. He, I'm trying to think of when Brian got married the first time. You'd been working on dinosaurs, though. Uh, was he? Was, did, no, he was married before that, right? I think, Brian I think so. Married, yeah. I mean, Brian got married in. Uh... Wasn't it like '91? Oh, now I'm confused. I thought they were married maybe in the, were they married the same Your year Jim wedding, passed right? away? I, I feel I like it was, was around that it. time. Yeah. Ellis, right? Well, Jim definitely wasn't there. So it'd have to be after that, right? So I guess, yeah. But you were so working on dinosaurs. Dinosaur. So I guess I was on dinosaur, yeah. But I didn't know Jerry right. or I didn't gotcha. know those guys. I knew Steve and I knew, you know, Frank a little bit because Frank would come and right. watch and offer advice and stuff on the on the show. But anyway, that was my f first quick Dobie meeting. But my f kind of my favorite story that I've probably told way too much is um, when we were doing Treasure Island, it was my first big movie, right? So I was very excited and very, uh, uh, you know, anxious to do whatever I could. And Brian teamed me up with Jerry to do Blind Pew. Mm -hmm. And so I was the hands. And I just was so excited just to be working with him because I hadn't really done anything with him. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, Jerry, do you think like when we're doing the, the, the do you want me to grab do this? I'll grab his, you know, the thing and I can pull and then, oh, and when you're saying that, why don't I do the thing with the stick? <laughs> and he just kind of went, he just said, you know, do whatever you think, man. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, yeah. okay, okay. He's like, yeah, Aww. just be cool. Just, you know, enjoy it. Don't worry about it. You know, and then he just trusted me to do whatever. And, uh, but you know, we just, so many years of singing together and getting to just, just time together. It's, I mean, there's so many things, so many sweet things, but I just, that's probably, you know, a little fun story that people might get a kick. Do you have a Jerry didn't, story? Well, wait, didn't you watch the premiere of Dinosaurs with Richard and Jerry at the Sherry? I would, you told I me did that watch story. the premiere of Dinosaurs at the Sherry Netherland. Jane Henson invited a bunch of people over. Oh, wow. And I think Jerry was I, there. Didn't yeah. you say that Jerry and Richard were like yeah. basically Statler and Waldorf yeah, yeah. thing the whole thing saying, why aren't we on this show? I remember you <laughs> yeah, telling me I that story and that thinking, now. holy yeah. crap. Yeah. No, I, re I remember. Because it was right yeah. before, it, it, was, it was the year, well, like, you know, Richard was going to be gone in a couple yeah, of years. Yeah. So they were just sitting together. You said they were like, not I heckling, but no, just no. making comments yeah, about. I, I, I totally forgot about that. But yeah, you're, you're right. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, Jerry was such, such a wonderful man. And one of the things that I remember when I was doing a documentary about Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas, mm. and I asked Jerry if he would do an interview. <clears throat> and he said, yeah, I'm going to come down, do some Sesame Street stuff. He was up, up at the Cape uh, at his place up there. I'm going to come down and do Sesame stuff. And then, you know, we can do an th interview in New York. And then he called me up 
a couple of weeks later. And he says, listen, my Sesame thing got changed. I'm going to record it uh, up here. Um, but I, why don't you come up to the Cape and you could stay in, in the guest room and, you know, you can come up and do it there. So I said, yeah. And I got my friend uh, Weston, uh, who's out there somewhere, maybe, I don't know. Um, and we People rented like a van. Yep. Yeah, we uh, rented a van and drove up to the Cape and got there. And Jerry was so sweet. And he's like, you know, Jan's away. I don't want to mess up the guest room. So come with me. I got you a bed and breakfast. So he oh. drove, you know, he said, follow me. I'll take you over there. And he, his friend, uh, Bill, uh, and his wife, they ran a bed and breakfast nearby and beautiful in place. Truro? Was it yeah. in Truro? Yeah. In Truro. And we went there. We stayed the night. Jerry took us out that night to Provincetown for dinner mm -hmm. and he wouldn't let me pay the bill. You know, it's like, and then <laughs> we did the interview the next day at his house. We had a great time. And, but that morning when I tried to pay uh, Bill for the, the rooms at the bed and breakfast, he said Jerry took, already took care of everything. Wow. You know, it's Sweet. like this was him yeah. doing a favor for me and he's paying right. for it. Yeah. You know? oh, man. And he's like, oh, I, you know, I made you come all the way up here. It was the least I could do. And I'm like, this was this was an amazing interview that he gave. But such I, a such a beautiful man. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite thing was just to try and get I love to watch him laugh, you know, and so oh. he, he like he didn't always like burst out, you know, he was trying no, to make right. others laugh and kept it dry and kept it. Yeah. Right? He was always trying yeah. to be the kind of witty one and, and, and get yep. other people to give, but to get him to laugh was like my favorite thing to try and do. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just remember, I don't have a specific story. But I just remember generally he was very humble about what he did. Like mm. I remember saying to him, Jerry, why don't you do voiceover work? Do you ever do voiceover? Ah, I tried that. It didn't work out. Jerry, are you going to put out an album? Like until he did Truro Dreaming, you're like, Jerry, what have you recorded? Ah, I, don't know. I just noodle <laughs> around, you know. Yeah. Jerry, you have such a beautiful, ah. you know, he, he was probably one of the most talented, like his talent to humility ratio was mm. incredible. Well, and he, he, it was about economy too. Like he didn't like to over exert oh. and do more than he really, like really had to like, he would nail things. Didn't right. have to do 10 takes, you know, he was so good that right. I think he knew like, you know, I got to, you know, just preserve my energy a little bit. I'm just, I'm not going to go out and try and get this gig or that gig. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm fortunate in what I'm doing. Grateful to be here doing what I'm doing. You know, right. it's oh, like actually, that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no go, go. Say, there was a uh, the story about him on the airplane with Al Pacino. Do you know this story? You no, story? I think so. No. no. So so um, so he's flying from L.A. to New York, and he happens to be seated next to Al Pacino. It's during the Muppet Show days, and Al doesn't know him, but of course Jerry knows who Al is, and they just start talking, and Al learns who Jerry is, and he's like, "Wow, you're on the Muppet Show. You know the Muppets were well known." Mm -hmm. And uh, and Al said, aren't, "Aren't you? Doesn't it bother you that people don't know you?" You know that they don't know who you are, yeah. and um, Jerry's like, mm, no. I mean, I, 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 there's something about the anonymity that I like. I think you know, I, I am an actor. I, st I was he studied to be an actor. That's what he wanted to be. But this is he's not wasn't concerned. And I was like, but that's like who we are as actors. We it's about us and the, you know people seeing us. And mm -hmm. Jerry's like, no. So they finally land in New York. And they're getting off the plane. It's okay. And Al goes out and he's completely mobbed. People are just <laughs> all over him. And Jerry and, kind of yep. scoots along the edge and goes, Al, it's a pleasure to meet you. And heads on his <laughs> way. You know. It's true. Uh, but it's like, yeah. I know that's a great story. story. Yeah. Of course. No, I think, I think I will say Jerry, of, of all the performers, Jerry was the one that taught me you could be really funny being small. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to go big to yeah. steal a scene because oh, Jerry yeah. could do that with like the tiniest little line oh, yeah. or just like a, okay, just, yeah. the, or just be still, and, or just be still. And I learned all, uh, that. I mean, I, I learned about pup, the, the, the brilliance of deadpan in puppetry when I was in college, but watching mm. Jerry when I first came there and seeing like everyone, cause you know how it is when you're coming up, you want to make, everyone laugh and like you said jerry didn't feel like he had to make everybody laugh but everyone in order to get cast and every job you have is the audition for the next job hey you know what what well, funny hey look at me look at me and and that's when i learned like no you can actually be much funnier 
with just you just you're like a little stealth bomber and just come in low and just go hello yeah that's that's the muppet upstage thing you know yeah. you the less is less is more because is everybody more. else is performing in the front and doing all the dialogue and you just yep. stay simple and it's, it's people are drawn here's a, a question from our good friend patrick cottonor who's uh the producer hey, of the patrick. george lucas talk show formerly oh, at wow. ucb and is also the uh works for marvel patrick right. says please talk about bobo thank you Please talk about Bobo. Well, uh, so when people ask me uh, where certain characters come from, uh, you know, Pepe is based on my wife's aunt from Madrid. Uh, Johnny Fiamma is based on my father and my grandfather, kind of a mix. And I, Bobo is probably the most like me. Uh, he's probably the character that I'm most like. You know, he, uh, I think he's just so amazed and grateful that no one has put him in a zoo, you know, that they actually allow him to be, <laughs> you know, to roam around. And, and I guess I kind of feel like that. Like I, I, I'm grateful to be a part of this group and people haven't realized, you know, maybe he doesn't really belong here. I don't know. <laughs> you know? But something about Boa, I think he's just so thankful that nobody's really recognized that he should be probably locked up somewhere because he's a bear. You know, he's like, why? Why, why, <laughs> why am I allowed to walk around? Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. And there's Who something, there's something very special about uh, Bobo too, because I remember we were, we were doing a thing at, at the Today Show. You loved writing for Bobo for oh, that. Oh, Bobo was great, but yeah. the, my favorite moment was not something I wrote because <laughs> true. Oh. we did a, a thing where we, we had Bobo as a security guard at the t Today Show, and you did, uh, you know, you had the clipboard and it's like name. And it was Matt Lauer, and he said Lauer, and and you just said <laughs> name <laughs> Lauer. I can't say it any longer. <laughs> I forgot about that. You, you it, didn't it expect turned that. into like five minutes. Yeah. Oh my god! But oh was, my god! I was on the oh floor, god. and I'm like, this is the best thing I never wrote. It's true. <laughs> but when I remember when you were writing it, you're just you were really happy to get to write for Bobo yeah. because you hadn't gotten to write for Bobo. And yeah. he'd well, love you know, it's it, you know. Actually, something I, for, I forgot. You know, when I first started, right, I wasn't doing Rolf or Dr. Teeth, right? And we were, and I, and I felt like there wasn't that, what I grew up with and what I was used to with the Muppets was hearing that thing, that, yeah. that voice. And now Jim wasn't there and I wasn't hearing that quality anywhere. And I thought maybe as kind of this, my little tribute to Jim mm. in a way and those voices is maybe I can slip in that quality of, and, and do that with Bobo. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that, you know, I would end up doing these other voices that have that thing in it. And so that became then my challenge is, you know, so and, and it's something I learned is that it isn't the voice, it's, it's about right. the right. character. So Bobo say. is a different person in a sense, or, you know, yeah. Dr. Teeth is a different character and so is Rolf. And so, I learned, you know, that it's not about the voices as much right. as it is, again, about the character. But yeah, I, I would never Bobo. have. Well, yeah. yeah, no, I would never have guessed that that was your intention with the where you left off with voice. I would mm. never have thought you were doing that as it because Bobo to me is so markedly different from what you do with Rolf and Dr. Teeth, again, because of those different, those marked differences in, in character. Right. Well, thanks. Yeah, because I way. think that's the thing. It's they, They've got a similar quality, obviously, but that right. was my original intention was to my little kind of secret yeah. tip to the Amazing. To but if you were to say the words, okay, sir, in all three of those <laughs> character voices, they <laughs> right. would be very different. Yeah, it's true. Yes. I still remember that one of the first times that I was writing for Pepe and you took me aside and listen, when you write okay, it's not a question. It's not a question. <laughs> The yeah. statement because I've been that's putting right. question marks and he's like that's not a question and everybody does because yeah. it's it that's what was so unusual about Christina's aunt was that she spoke in statements she mm. didn't she wasn't interested in asking you a question because she didn't want an answer she just wanted to tell you what <laughs> she wanted you to do and that's what I just thought was so fun about Pepe it was that she always like come on we go to, uh, to the start be like I Okay. And it's kind of interesting because you perform one of the smallest Muppets and one of the largest yeah. Yeah, right. Muppets. That's true. Because I don't yeah. think people are aware of how physically taxing Bobo is. 
he, uh, he, and he used to be harder, but uh, Jane and, and who else, somebody else in the workshop, I wish I remember at the time, created the idea of me wearing a backpack that has a, a bar now that goes up. Well, it's been there for years, but it mm -hmm. goes up and it supports a lot of the weight, which allows me to then add the weight to him and try right. and make him feel heavier. But at right. least I can keep him up. It for distributes a it a, a little yeah. better. Yeah. Let's do Carl's um, artist. Yeah, that's we're nice. running low on time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. But Sorry. Why don't well, we do one, an, yeah. another round yeah. of uh, show and tell, and then we'll start wrapping things up. So, Bill, oh. do you have another? I oh, think you, had, right. you, well, you showed us a little something before the show. It was I'll, just a I'll jump to the art, the artwork thing. That one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so when we were doing Muppets tonight, um, we had Tony Bennett on, which was just a, the dream guest of mine. That was. I just couldn't believe he was going to be on the show mm. and that it was going to be related to Johnny Fiamma. The story was going to be related to him and thank goodness for Dick Placucci who knew that I was a big fan of Tony Bennett's and he, Dick loves Johnny Fiamma. It's the whole Italian American thing and he loves Sal. And so um, we, the story was about them. And so while Tony was in his trailer, he had a TV in his trailer so that he could see what was happening on stage. Um, he decided to sketch, and, and a, lot, a lot of people know, but some don't, that Tony is an artist, a uh, painter, and he sketches. But while he was in there, he decided that he wanted to sketch his three favorite characters while we were working. And they are Clifford, Johnny, and Sal. And he, at the end of the day, he came up to Brian and Kevin and I, and he said, uh, excuse me, fellas, but uh, would you mind signing this for me? <laughs> we, we, I think all of our mouths dropped, you know, to the floor. And um, he said, uh, I really appreciate it. And so <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding, of course. And so I signed it and then Brian and, and, and uh, Kevin Clash. And so then over the years, um, I, you know, we kind of kept in touch a little bit. And uh, I went to see him in concert and got to go backstage to, to hang out. And he had the same drawing pad. This was like four years later or something. And uh, he goes, Bill, I want to show, I want to show you something. And he gets his thing on. He goes, remember this? It's like, yeah, are you kidding? He goes, I want you to have it. And I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so he gave it to me. And now, now that was about 10 years ago. I, I took this out of, storage because my style a lot of stuff i had had in storage and i realized he had never signed it so just about six months ago i sent it to his son danny and he finally signed it there oh, for me because wow. i just That's thought incredible. how could he not you know i right. gotta have his thing on there but yeah that was just uh yeah amazing that he that's beautiful and, and you know it was cool just talking oh we gotta go quick the the art side of it when we were shooting you know steph you know this how um uh, different people, actors that you work with uh, can relate to the characters or sometimes they don't, but yep. usually they fall into it. Tony, I don't, think, so... I don't think we get cut off, so you can just keep talking. Oh, oh okay. But so, sometimes um, they don't, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so sometimes they don't connect with it because right. it, it just, uh, whatever reason. Or they're trying and to I... look at you underneath. Yeah, they want to look trying at to your figure eyes. out who am yeah. I talking to? And, and some right. people just fall into it. Of course. Tony, I think Tony, because he was an artist, was uh, enamored with the shapes and the colors. And, uh, and so with Johnny, he was like, you know, well, I, I love the green, you know? Uh -huh. and, uh, and, I, and so when we started shooting, um, we didn't, it wasn't working right away when we were doing scenes because he, he wasn't connecting and, and right. he couldn't connect until we, um, we stopped uh, shooting for a minute. And Brian said, you know, uh, we got to, uh, I don't know, it, it, we're, you, you guys are kind of talking past each other in a way. And I said, okay. So while we were waiting to do something, they were setting cameras, I put Johnny up, you know, as we do in between takes as well. Yeah. And I said, uh, Tony, you know, what's the problem with, the, uh, with LA? Huh. And, and, and Tony goes, no, what? <laughs> and Johnny goes, you know what's wrong with LA? You can't get good bread. <laughs> and, and Tony goes, you know, you're right. It's because of the water. 
And he's like, yeah, that's right. We don't get the same water. The water is what makes the bread nice. He said, that's right. And you know what? Same goes with pasta. What's your favorite pasta? I like linguine. Oh, I love a good modernized spaghetti. Sometimes I like bucatini. And all of a sudden they're talking, they're connecting. And then finally we, he, he, he gave up, you know, the thing. It wasn't about the character or the colors yeah. and stuff anymore in the shape. He finally connected. But it was really an interesting little process, you know, with him yeah. to, to go through that. It was a, a well, what I find fascinating about that is why he wasn't connecting is because he was fascinated by the color and the craftsmanship of the puppet. And yeah. I've never heard that story from any other performer that like, that's the reason why the celebrity, right. not, right. it's so weird I'm looking into ping poles. It's so weird this fuzzy <laughs> yeah. thing is talking to me. I want to look in your eyes, you're down there. It's right. like, this thing is so beautiful and so beautifully designed and so beautifully yeah. built and look at the colors and the, like, that's yeah. why? That's an yeah. amazing, like there, yeah, there's so many levels of amazing to that story. But yeah. I love, but yeah. see, that's what's great about you is you just, you put people at ease with your characters, you find that way to do that. When you improvise in character, and I've only gotten to experience being with you a, a couple of times when you're just riffing. When we've been able to play, yeah. When we've right. been able to play. I, I, yeah. I don't get to work, see this guy anymore. I haven't, I haven't yeah. been on a set with you in what, like 15 years? It's been a long time. Long I feel time. like it's been a long time. Um, yeah. You are so great at just going. So that's why I always, I, that's, that's why I'm always jealous of the other guys. It's like, <laughs> play with my pal, Bill. Play with my pal, Bill. Well, well, let's just, we could just do this. We call each other. This would be a great thing. We'll play I with remember, our puppets. I remember when we were, remember in like 2001, when they were having those meetings to maybe do a new like Muppet show for the Germans. Oh yeah. Yeah. And right. I was out in LA and I got invited to that. And I remember like, Wanting to create like characters. a mall character for Johnny. Like, hey, Johnny, let me be yeah, in the right. show. <laughs> Come on, Johnny, introduce me. Uh, and yeah. That was the closest I got to just playing in that moment. That was the closest just I got to Yeah, really right. Yeah. Didn't get to, yeah he I'm not to. saying it was the best idea, but I just wanted to work with you. Like, that was really where fun. that came from. It was I like, who want to work with Bill? How can I work with Bill? Ooh, Johnny. Ooh, mall. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's hear what there's a question here that you should probably talk about. John Donald asks, what can Bill tell us about Muppets Now? Ooh. Oh, Disney's Muppets uh, Now. I don't know if I can tell you anything, to be honest. I think it's coming. So Muppets uh, Now will be then. Yes, Muppets Now will be then. Uh, but soon when then. it's then, it will be now. Uh, I wish I could Someone tell you more. Someone says it's coming uh, in July. Yes. Someone, Is this it been summer announced reportedly? or something? I think they announced it, yeah. Disney this said su this summer. summer on this if it's summer, been a, on Disney if it's announced Plus. this summer, then that's probably when it is. But so it's, it's uh, the short pieces. Well, I can tell you it's fun. I can tell you we had fun doing it. Uh, I can tell you there's a variety of thing, a variety of, uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you anything. Okay. I think you've got to wait for it. I think we learn too much too soon about things. I, I think, think we've lost right. our sense of, you know what I mean? Like our sense yes. of patience. Like and childlike wonder. It's like we've got to know, like, and then no. when it comes, it's kind of disappointing because you've been waiting so long that the excitement right. is gone. So I just, I, I prefer, like, if that's okay, I'm sorry, I apologize, I but no, no. I'd rather you wait and, and see what But happens. it's a good thing that it will be coming. Something uh, is coming. Um, as we wrap up, I want to acknowledge, uh, Bill, this has been so much fun to have you with us. And the we should do this again. Just, let's do yeah, this same thing two. again because it's, it's yeah. so much fun okay. to talk and answer, answer questions. We could yeah, we could just stay here for like twelve hours. There are like seventy five questions in the Q and yeah. I, think, I think we bring on the other guys too. Like let's get oh, the wouldn't that? let's do that. guys and gals to come on. You know, wow. that'd be fun. Pop in. Um, I want to remind everybody watching out there to uh, join the museum's mailing list and you'll get uh, messages about all that stuff. You can join the Jim Henson Legacies mailing list. Uh, send an email to list at jimhensonlegacy.org because that's actually how this happened. I sent out a newsletter thing about everybody else. Bill emailed me and said, hey, how do I get to be a part of this? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah well, you're going to be a part of this. Thanks. So um, let's mention Bill and uh, your brother's uh, oh, yes. podcast. Yes, starting uh, 
on May 16th, um, every Saturday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, my brother Gene and I will be doing a vodcast. And it's a live thing? It's live, uh, yeah, for an hour. Um, and it's called the Beretta Brothers, Two of Us. And we're going to have two guests within the hour, two kind of guest segments at each hour. And we're going to just talk about our childhood and the things that we've done and talk about our careers and talking with our friends and bringing on family to talk about stories, you know, uh, about childhoods and, and maybe finding some, you know, having some celebrity guests and artists and um, maybe hopefully siblings of those would be fun to have somebody, you know, I just think it'd be great to have like the Coen brothers on or something, oh. you know. To and find on your first show you have... Uh... Our first show is Brian, special. Brian Henson. And, and that's uh, on the anniversary of Jim's uh, passing. It is 30th anniversary of Jim's passing. And we're going to have, so we're going to have Brian Henson. And then we're going to have our cousins, Gary Giordano and Nancy Willosian, Gary's cousin. So, and they're hysterical. It's amazing that you could get those guys. They're very, I, I, I tried to book them busy. for this. I, now, now, now for people who don't know, now for people who don't know Gene, and if you yes. don't, you should know Gene. Give Gene us Beretta. a little sense of uh, his his fantastic the things he's been doing. Gene Beretta he's, he's is great. a an award winning uh, author il illustrator of children's books. Mm -hmm. You can go to his site GeneBeretta.com. He's you'll see all of his amazing artwork and stories. He's he, done some animation for Sesame that's Street. Right. Animation for Sesame. He was a uh, he's designed characters uh, for the Jim Henson Company. Um, he storyboarded on Muppets from Space. Uh, I didn't know that. He's, wow. He's a, he's amazing. And, he's uh, Gee, and no, I wouldn't be doing guy. what I do if it wasn't for him. Cause he's the old, he's older than me. So he got me to do things when we were kids. So, so we got other stuff to plug quickly. I want to mention yes. Helpsters Help You, which is Stephanie's uh, short bit series that she did for uh, Apple Jeepers. TV plus, mm -hmm. which was shot right in this room. Yeah. Right opposite us is the green screen where we oh, shot right. those. And you can watch the rest of Helpsters on Apple TV plus as well. And that's where you can find Fraggle Rock, the sh new shorts that are uh, running right. from the Jim Henson Those are Company. Great. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, also, what have you seen this yet, Bill? The Prop Culture Show on uh, Disney Plus. No. Where they they track down props from past movies and things. No, show, no. I watched yeah. the, I watched the uh, WDI documentaries. Oh, that yeah, was yeah. amazing. Well, yeah. they just started airing Prop Culture, and they did an episode about the Muppet movie. And oh, they really? tracked down yeah. some really cool stuff. They tracked down. Oh, did Dave do something for that? Yes, Dave yeah. did Dave something it? for that. I heard Brian he was doing it. it. Right, I heard and they were Paul doing Williams. it. I'm Paul so, Williams show. Oh, it's yeah. a really cool. fun episode. They found uh, some cool stuff. Oh, I gotta and watch. And Callista that. Hendrickson, Amy Van Gilder, they're on it as well. Oh my gosh! Uh, wow. Yeah, and Paul, Paul Williams, and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, wow. And I should mention, Center for Puppetry Arts is doing a Dark Crystal trivia night on May 14th on uh, online. On another channel, on another <laughs> network. <laughs> My friend Jake Keith Van Stratton's podcast, Go Fact Yourself, is uh, the latest episode has uh, a Muppet theme because uh, Danielle Koenig, Walter Koenig's daughter, picked oh. Muppets as her topic. And Kirk Thatcher, our old pal, is the special guest expert. So Excellent. check that out on- He's friends with Kirk podcast. and Walter have a bit of a history. Yes. They work together on a yes. certain movie. Star Trek <laughs> yes. for the voyage home. Uh, and watch for social media for news of our next uh, next week's thing, whatever that may be. And uh, thanks, Bill. And, oh, and sorry, can I? Oh, I just forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this thing. Uh, oh yeah. He's, yeah. he's been listening. Jules. But Jules. if people if people get a chance, you can go to YouTube channel Jules's Little Gems uh, and watch some kind of fun little humorous perspective on you know people just creating some awareness for people to stay safe. Uh, this is Jules, he's just hanging out in here because I don't have room in the other room. So I just He's been very he, well behaved. He has, he, 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 he pretends he's not here and he's just listening. Right. And, yeah. and, and he's uh, like anyway, Lucy Ricardo, he wants to be in the I show. I should mention the Tough Pigs also have been doing a series of uh, interviews online and you can see all mm. the past ones, including me. That's on, right. Uh, their they YouTube just did page. Surf and, and this will tell your friends if they couldn't catch this, this will end up on the Museum of the Moving Images YouTube page sometime in the future. 
You mean forever? Uh, can I just say? Uh-oh. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. Son Jack, my son Jackson is helping me create these pieces. So he's been a big part hey. of writing and the ideas. He's in them as well. He plays the kid who the he's bear is with him and his wife, uh, him and his mother. So, and Christine is in it a little bit. But yeah, uh, yeah Jackson's been a great help in creating that thing. And so we've been having fun. Actually, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. I feel like the one thing that hasn't been mentioned about the content that's being created from home broadcast and just you know people doing stuff on youtube is all of the families who've been pitching in you know who else do you have for your crew this guy i could not have done helpsters help you without this guy because he's everything Uh, i know that all the muppet people the sesame people all you guys doing the muppet stuff it's it's like you're you're you can't do it all by yourself and so uh yeah this is uh, thank you for reminding me because i really think it's going to be opening up the disney sing-along oh that's right oh my gosh yeah that's that's right uh yeah so, so please exciting. watch that it's a it's on the a 16th thing. as well right no that's tomorrow night it's it's tomorrow, tomorrow, night? Day. Mother's day. Oh, tomorrow mother's day mother's day something was yeah. something else was happening on the 16th anyway yeah, um, it's a fun opening. yeah that's great so i just want to shout out to all of the people you know the spouses and the kids i mean you hear stories about samantha b's show and her kids are unwillingly holding up bounce cards while jason jones yeah. shooting the show and it's like that's really special. So I think it's super special that, that Jackson and Christina are, are, are helping you with that. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it is interesting how something that we're going through actually creates opportunities to do for families to do things together that you would never Absolutely. have thought you would do, you know? And That's so right. it's been great, actually. Yeah. Well, Amen. thanks so much, Bill. We wish we could give you a big Bill, hug. You're the best. And uh, yeah. we, we hope to see you in person. And uh, oh. join us again if, if we can, because we could talk to you for hours. We That's really should. True. I would love to do it again. I, oh, 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 sorry, I clicked by mistake. Okay. I would love to do it again. <laughs> okay, excellent. Thanks. Yeah. And Thank goodbye, you, everybody. Uh, stay, yeah, stay healthy and, and safe. And, 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 and How do we leave? And,